Welcome to Tuber Chat. Whether you're working on your first 1,000, 2,000, or even 10,000 subscribers and beyond, you've come to the right place. We're going to introduce you to some of the most influential content creators that can help to get your channel moving beyond your first 10,000 subscribers. So um, thank you very much for being with me, Danielle and James. It's been a long time coming. This is Unstable TV. Thank you so much for having us, and we're very excited to be here on the Chilper Chat family. Yep. I appreciate your patience, both of you, because Danielle and James offered to join us and share some of their insight and their knowledge on both of their channels now, a uh, long time ago. So this is a long time coming. I know everybody's going to be very excited. But for anybody that hasn't already seen Unstable TV, if I could ask you to introduce your channel so I don't leave anything out. Uh, where do we start? So uh, we started the channel about four years ago. Yep. We do re mostly reactions, but we do vlogs and challenges and everything else in between as well. Yep. We also try and teach people how to edit and do thumbnails the way we do them. We even give some advice in the live streams and we try and get as many of the people that comment and join in with us to join in on our live streams with us. But it's mostly reactions and having fun and just wherever we feel like recording that day. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. I've been lucky actually to catch you both on the road um, when you've yeah. taken a couple of vacations. So much so that I was actually even confused because I missed a few videos there where you moved <laughs> to Australia. So well, we can start <laughs> there. And uh, I, I probably have a million questions, but I'll start with one that I imagine everybody will wonder. So you moved from Ireland to Australia, and with your YouTube channels, both of them, have you found any differences, whether they be cultural differences or acceptance in society based on walking around with cameras and things like that? Is there anything you could tell us? Well, it depends on like what part of like the city. They're not too confused by yeah. like they used to it because there are quite uh, a few video makers. People are like yourself very technologically advanced, but when you get more rural, it's kind of like when you talk into the camera, they're kind of like, "Who do they think they are?" You know that type <laughs> right. of thing. It's just because the way they've been living, they're kind of like, "What are you doing? What you should be doing a trade and stuff like that." But that's their understanding, which is fine. But right. yeah, some some places are like it doesn't bother them. Other places, they kind of jump in. They're like, "What's yes. going on here? <laughs> <laughs> <you doing> that? <laughs> What's the point of this?" And you try and tell it to them, and some get it, and some are like, "Oh, that's cool," and just leave it. <laughs> wow. But um, I think Australia itself, it's fine for it. Yeah. It's just when you're recording, you underestimate the sun because it heats your phone, <laughs> and it's like. The battery is like lava, and that's yeah. no exaggeration. We've done it. We've recorded once outside, um, like during the day when it was the peak, like hotness, and we had to stop after two videos because the phone wasn't going to make him. Yep. Yeah. So we can only really record here, kind of in the evening when it gets a bit cooler. Yep. So and there's no light down, so we have to just do it inside. <laughs> so, like in Ireland, when we're recording. It didn't matter what time, like you could record whenever the phone wouldn't do yes. that. We've never experienced where the phone actually comes up on the screen and says it's too hot and turns itself mm -hmm. off. <laughs> never experienced that until we got to Australia. Right. And wow. Another thing as well, when we're recording, we've never picked up so many random noises yeah. in the background than we have when wow. we're in the outbacks of Australia recording. It's just animals oh. everywhere and they're so loud and you never know which animal <laughs> it is. And you never know where they are. They could be in the room with you and you wouldn't know. Yep, <laughs> and we only learned the other day that frogs have an offensive scream if they think a microphone's attacking them. <laughs> wow, wow, we're going to be listening for that in your videos now. <laughs> yeah, I know. We try to cut it out as much as we can, but we have a lot of shorts already up about animals that we've seen on a few pictures on our Instagram. Yeah, and mm -hmm. um, we actually had to catch a frog inside the room the other day because they got in. Oh wow! Um, that was very scary in the middle of the night. A frog came around. <laughs> we didn't know what it was. Yeah. So, yeah, that was pretty funny. Sorry, we cut it with a pot and released it back into the well. We're not pro. <laughs> wow. You, um, you mentioned the idea of shorts. So that gives me an yeah. opportunity to jump right into that. 
So, um, you know, in every one of these interviews, I'm asking about opinions, about shorts, how we can get them to work for us. But you're the first creators that I'm talking to that have broken off into a shorts channel. I also noticed that you took the shorts off of the original channel. I'm assuming you uploaded the same ones over there. And now you have over 350 shorts on that channel. At last look, it was, uh, I think, your, lar your fastest moving short video on the shorts channel, which is unstable TV shorts, has 22,000 views, and you're already at 768 subscribers. So the biggest thing that I think people are going to be wondering about that is how do you feel about your decision to break your shorts off into their own channel? Yeah, so the reason we did it in the first place was because we felt like the shorts were distracting from our long form videos because mm -hmm. we were getting a lot of like views and attention on the shorts but while we were doing shorts and long form at the same time it's kind of like the long form was like pushed to the back yeah right yeah um so that's the reason why we split off into a short channel by itself so we kind of use that for just you know like skits and memes and stuff and then we use it for promotion videos for our main channel as well mm -hmm. so you said um some of our highest um, viewed videos on the Shorts channel, they are clips from our long form videos with the oh, link good. to send it back. So, yeah, that's, yeah we just kind of felt it didn't sit right with our channel to have it all together. So, we right. said we'd try and split it and see if it worked. Yeah, because when we um when we first put them up, we had like like you're saying about the YouTube algorithm and stuff, and you know when you're watching the metrics go up and down. When we start putting the shorts up, the videos that would usually go up and probably after a week they performed the way they done were like pushed to the back. Yeah. But how we felt from how we were watching on our analytics for anyone watching, mm -hmm. do make sure you check your analytics out regularly. It does help. Yeah. And there is a research tab as well. So check that out as well. It helps with your channel. Because you get an idea of where your viewers are coming in and what they're researching as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a just a tip for everyone. On the main channel, it didn't sit for us, but yeah. even like scrolling up and down and like how it looked, we didn't like mm -hmm. it. But we used the shorts as kind of a, a voice, like you know, say things you can't really say on the main uh, video mm -hmm. that might not like go with YouTube's policies. Like, we have a lot of fun with like pranking each other and stuff yeah. like that. Like, yeah, what we have noticed though with our shorts, anything to do with relationships or like pranks was that like skyrockets for us. Wow. Or if we do like say like a trend of meme, sometimes we might get something and sometimes we might not. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we've learned that like shorts really help us have like John them crazy ideas where you just get a bit wild when you're filming on YouTube and you're like, I wanna do this or maybe this might look funny. It's kind of to make ourselves laugh and yeah. then just go that wow. direction with it and just come up with crazy stuff then. You two have had an incredible chemistry ever since the beginning. I think it's what drew me to um, enjoy your content in particular so much. You touched on the idea of doing reaction videos. How did you come up with the concept for doing so many reaction videos? Because you've obviously done really well. Well, what happened originally was we were making, making the videos we were making and then we decided we'd look at some old advertisements one day because we seen an um an advertisement for like i think it was like some soap spray or something mm. and it was just crazy like yeah. how they done it like the stop motion you know the old style stuff okay. motion in black and white yeah and they were like i know? wonder what all the old ads used to look like in like the 60s and 70s yeah so mm -hmm. we originally uploaded it for ourselves and we're not gonna lie like we literally uploaded it because we want to watch it that's what we went with so then we were nice enough to have people that just came and commented and they were like we really enjoyed your family chemistry and they start commenting and they were like why don't you do this and why don't you react on this and we never really kind of thought about that much and then they came in they sent us links so that's when we started like well if they're asking for it let's listen to the audience yeah because mm -hmm. they're nice enough to spend their time here and sit with us so wow we start that way so it started as a suggestion really yeah i just kind of evolved from there yeah 
Sorry. You adapted really well then when the audience started to interact with you. So one of the things that people, of course, are going to ask, we're going to go through things like likes, thumbs up. Um, but one of the yeah. things that will be important for everybody is how can we get more comments? That's one of the most magical pieces of interaction. Um, so what can you tell us in your experience that drives more engagement along the lines of what you're talking about? Well, in all of our videos, we ask people to give us suggestions or give us their thoughts on mm -hmm. what we all just watched. And we do that on our blogs and our challenges and our, you know, try videos and everything. We said, we ask them, what do you want us to try next? Or what do you want us to watch next? Or mm -hmm. have you had anything like this before? What are your thoughts? But I feel like saying things like that um, kind of makes the audience want to comment and want to interact mm -hmm. more because we comment back to like the majority of people anyway and kind of mm -hmm. we want to like get conversations going so i think that kind of helps a bit just kind of asking people to comment as well yeah the big the big thing as well what we found because one of the things you know from the side of us all being creators and starting together one thing we watch from looking at big youtubers they don't reply to the people that are yeah. spending their time that come on and they comment and they take the time, they discuss, they, they don't reply to them, they don't acknowledge them. Mm -hmm. We have said it doesn't matter where we're at, like how high the channel goes, where, like what we're doing, we'll make sure to reply to everyone. Like mm -hmm. even if it takes us a few weeks, we're going to reply to everyone because they're the way we feel, they're taking the time, they've taken time out there, they could be doing anything else and they're here commenting. Yeah. But, We've noticed it doesn't matter. Make sure you don't focus on the views. When someone comments, comment back to them. It doesn't matter if your video went up, down, left, right, wherever <laughs> way you feel it went. Just make sure you're always engaging with people because we've had where sometimes we get more comments than we get views in the videos because yeah. people are used to engaging with us. Mm -hmm. We we just love that. Like we love hearing what people have to say, and we love when you know they tell you. Like for example, on one of the um, was it it's Gander Yellow Ribbon video we yeah. reacted on? No, that was that was powerful stuff from start to finish, like very heartfelt. Like that's where your own fellow Canadians stepped in and actually okay. helped all helped all the passengers on the plane. Yeah. And the stories and just yeah. where people were at that time and like even we had loads of people from Newfoundland that put us on to other stuff about people in Newfoundland with the same accents as us. They were like, <laughs> if you search this, you'll hear their accents and we were like yeah. mind blown. We still have to do a video on that as well. But stuff like that, when they come in, they give a heartfelt response, they give their stories, and you're just reading it, and you're talking back and forth, and you're meeting like no loads of new people in the comments. It's just amazing. Yeah. But yeah, definitely what Danielle said is how uh, we usually got more comments. It's wonderful the way you put it, because um, I think that we hear that kind of thing and a lot of creators might struggle with it, but this is what we're looking for is gold. So thank you for that. Of course. We weren't even going to ask people to comment or anything like that for a long time, because we kind of thought it was a bit, it was a bit cheeky kind of to ask people to do mm -hmm. that. But no, it does actually, yeah. it does actually really help because people in the comments are like, oh, sometimes we just forget. Yeah. Or, right. you know, sometimes we, you know, we don't think people want us to comment on it, so we don't. So it's kind of better to ask than to not ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We, we got a lot of helpful feedback as well from our viewers. Like when we ask them a lot of stuff or we put up polls and stuff, some people are very good in like how they want um, the channel to look or like when a video comes out, what they want to say. And sure, as when Danielle was saying, when we put, you know, have a make sure you like, comment, and share, and subscribe, and all that good mm -hmm. YouTube stuff. They um sure as they appreciate the the uh, sentiment of putting that in there for them. Yeah. But we thought mm -hmm. at the start that was a bit. I, I don't know. We just thought it was a bit real to do it. Yeah, so. YouTube gets tired, and you kind of get afraid to do a lot of stuff. Yeah, you kind yeah. of tell yourself one thing. Like it does happen. It doesn't matter what level you're at. You yeah. tell yourself some idea. Maybe you were just on a walk, and you're like, maybe that's not a right thing to do and then your viewers will turn around and say no we can not you did that and then here you are then 
I would have to say, just because I've known your channel uh, and both of you for a long time now, I think we've known each other beyond three years, um, your chemistry, yep. I mentioned it before, but is just out of control. And what I have noticed in the last few videos that I've watched is when you, I mean, you've always been fun. And I've always said that about the both of you and your channel. But when you do the things you're talking about, asking for comments and the other interactions, you do it in such a fun way. What can you tell us about improvement over time when somebody is starting their YouTube journey now and may not want to do the things like asking for the likes and the comments and the shares? How can you help somebody improve with a little bit more speed than you had for yourselves when you started? Um, it's a lot to do with your confidence though, as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's very like we'd we'd love to say there's a fast one for that. Like you have to like it is a lot to do with confidence, yeah. but it's very like um you need to watch a lot of uh YouTubers like like when when we start we like when we stay with Chilver Chat, we think that's where our confidence skyrocketed because we were with creators that were like ourselves, you know, they were doing it for the love of it as well. And then we had yourself, Kevin, cheering us all mm -hmm. on as well. And mm -hmm. you always have, um, you know, you were always brilliant with what was going on with the policies, how how the behind the scenes worked. Like we hadn't a clue about um, YouTube could just take the views like that. Yeah. And you were there to yeah. guide us all. And we were like, because we were all very like, oh no, like my channel's broke or something. You're like, no, <laughs> they do yeah. this, you know. And we're Still all sitting there pulling our hair out going, oh, what did I do? And you're like, no, no, this happens. It, it'll come back. It'll come back around. But with the um, initial growth, what worked for us was maybe if you weren't comfortable saying it, we put like um, we put a graphic in between it, like mm -hmm. have like a light graphic going in. And like even with Capcom now, they have like free graphics for stuff like yeah. that. It's very mm -hmm. helpful for creators starting. Like I think CapCut would skyrocket people starting out now. Yeah. Oh, good. Because when we started, we used them. Um, Sorry, there's one of the bugs now. Yeah, there's one of the bugs <laughs> in the background. Mm -hmm. What the what the videos again? It was very like it takes us like ten hours to run our video. That's yeah. no joke. Like that was yeah. That's where we were at, and um, yeah when we kind of switch more mobile it kind of took off for us then and we kind of focus more on creating content and just saying whatever we need to say in the videos and then that's what kind of helped us grow a bit further yeah. if i understand you right you're saying that was like a turning point for your channel yeah, yeah. and you started to really explode so i just want to get you to elaborate on that i did catch the idea you're talking about cap cut yeah. from the yeah. bite dance company that brings us TikTok. that's their uh, app for editing and yeah. filters and things yeah. like that but um that turning point for your channel where you said you went more mobile can you elaborate on that and let us know what you're thinking because this i think people's ears are going to be to the speakers for this <laughs> yeah you think, yeah, I think it's just because when you're using the phones, you have more freedom with it. Yep. Okay. And it's a lot, you know, it's a lot easier to just bring around and a whole camera rig up with the mics and the lights and everything. It's literally just the phone and mm -hmm. the little mini microphone we have, wherever it is. Um, <laughs> show you know, the, the mic that we use. This beauty right here. <laughs> yeah, I see you passing it back and forth all yeah. the time. <laughs> It's easily one of the best things we ever bought, and it was two dollars. Two dollars. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. two dollars. We got on wish. <laughs> we uh, <laughs> now we made the YouTube. You know, we seen the technology. We spent crazy money yeah. on mics. We saved up. We mm. spent mirror mirrorless cameras, DSLRs. We tried that. Yeah. I d I don't know. The phone just really took off for us. Yeah, like, I think we just feel like when I was saying about the confidence, we just felt more comfortable using the phone yeah and i think that's a lot to do with it as well if you if the equipment is too you know is too, yeah it's too daunting if it's too mm -hmm. i don't know what we're trying to say. Just intimidating maybe yeah because you know when you start off you think you have to have the most expensive camera the most expensive mic mm -hmm. yeah 
you don't. I think that's where a lot of our confidence picked up from because we kind of stopped having like a big setup, which mm-hmm. took ages. And it was literally just the phone, a light, and a microphone. Yeah. And that was it. We could just kind of run away with that and do it alone. And I think that's what what helped us kind of realize we don't need all, you know, the, the most expensive things. We don't need the most up-to-date equipment. We don't need all this. And that was kind of stopping us from doing a lot as well. That mm-hmm. I think it just gave us more freedom, really, and just helped us a lot. Yeah, like, we watched them. Um we don't study as well on youtube like there's a lot of um gurus as they call themselves and they tell you you need a lot of this and that and you need certain i don't really believe that like i believe it's kind of how like your confidence speaks true like you're seeing what happens to yourself even kevin like you're on chill with chat like you're very confident on it like sometimes your green screen can go on you and sometimes it'll cut off but you can keep the whole live stream yeah. still going like it wouldn't mm-hmm. matter if that how would you put it? That camera went blank. Your voice alone would keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah I think that's where it helps come true, like the confidence of it. Mm-hmm. And what really worked for us, like we had the DSLR set up originally, but when we got on the mobile, we just felt like, oh, we've so much room to make mistakes with. Yeah. But mm. we also like cut our render time majorly down. Like we had a render time of like 10 to 12 hours. It was crazy. Like, you yeah. Know, like, yeah. In the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You wake up in the morning and it still wasn't finished. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's what helped us like really show. But uh, like another thing we've done as well, this is a big, big tip now. Well, first, I just remember there is already for you're saying uh, how would you advance quicker in your YouTube mm-hmm. journey? Yeah. Yeah. What we done, because when we first started, like that'll eventually come out, we had takes upon takes of doing like, what would be simple to us now but we had a lot of takes and yeah. it was pretty funny like we look back and laugh on it <laughs> but if you have the time set your phone or your camera up and just whatever you're thinking in your head get it all out in front of the camera say it as many times as you can and really watch back and laugh at yourself because mm-hmm. it does help yeah. i know a lot of people are like oh i don't want it it will help yeah and if mm-hmm. you really watch where you, you kind of drop or where your confidence goes down a bit and kind of sit in the viewer seat and kind of go, well, I'd like it to go like this or go like that, but kind of get all your crazy ideas out and just have a ball in front of the camera. Yeah. Just go wild in front of it. You don't have to upload it. You can still yes. cut out a shorts for anyone that wants to do shorts. You can still cut yeah. them out and mess with that, but just have a ball. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's. Well, I think that's another thing as well that, that helped us when we realized that you don't have to use every single piece of you know content that you filmed yeah because mm-hmm. that's what we were worried about with the stars that's why we had to keep we had to keep like starting and stopping all the time because we yeah. were like it has to be every single thing but it doesn't yeah and it's a very it's a very big thing to remember as well for everyone watching on your channel remember we're all coming to your channel to see you don't think you need to be like and I'm not going to name bigger YouTubers, but don't think you need to be like them or you need yeah. to be, be you. Yeah. Because, like, like at the start, we had a song, like, you know, <laughs> welcome back to a stable. <laughs> now, we're going to get that going again. But at the start, like, we just done that because that was, like, we were messing around. Yeah. That's, that's, what, that's what I was talking about when we were wow. saying, you know, you turn the camera on, you go, well, so yeah. me and Danielle were just having a lot of fun that day. Like when Danielle goes, TV, <laughs> like we were just messing <laughs> And uh, we actually liked it. And we were like, yeah, yeah that's pretty funny. We'll throw that in. And people were commenting, singing along to it. But that was yeah. just yeah. something that wasn't planned content. And that's why I say like that could advance your YouTube journey like straight up, yeah. just messing around. So anyone watching, please do turn the camera on and have a blast Absolutely. don't worry That's about when it's uploading just get in front of it and have a blast i'm so glad that you're both saying that i think a lot of people need to hear that yeah yeah but that's that is something that we struggled with a lot at the start we thought everything had to be so perfect mm-hmm. but it doesn't no it really doesn't and if you focus too much on everything being perfect you won't get anything else we have some videos uploaded where we look like we've been dragged through a bush before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, pretty bad. Yeah, we like we thought we were fine that day. We thought we were 
we were obviously grand, and then we looked back at the video and was like, wow. Yep. But we did it, wow. and it's yeah. up there. So you can look back. If you switch the oldest and look back, you'll see us. And it's not getting deleted because it's them, because that's who we are. Yeah. But um, actually, that's another thing that we don't that we do a lot. We still do it now. Um, to help us. Yeah. Is we go on to like bigger YouTubers and go to their oldest videos to see how they started. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. obviously, it's not going to be like it is today. Yep. And yep. everyone's going to be nervous and you know everything. But it's good. It's nice to see that even people with like over a million are like that at the start as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, a big thing as well, like, I know, as you know yourself, Kevin, people, like, big YouTubers, they might get taken off with American agencies, they'll delete their videos for whatever reason, so that's what they mm -hmm. do. But there are YouTubers out there that are big that keep their older ones. Mm -hmm. But even look at our oldest and look at Kevin's oldest, even on his personal channel as well, <laughs> you can see the progression. Yeah. And yeah. that's like, because we watch, we watch a lot of your older ones as well, and we watch the progression. Same with you, Bacha, and you can see like how as it progresses and progresses, the confidence is just beaming through them. And like, right. that's why I was saying to you, you can like the one of you on the plane, it's like you just completely took over that plane as well, which was pretty much <laughs> <fun to watch. laughs> when you were flying it. <laughs> you oh, yeah. yeah, it starts off, Kevin's like a bit nervous, and after he just takes <laughs> off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, I appreciate you mentioning that, but you're you're absolutely right. The progression for all of us, it doesn't matter how much uh, yep. confidence we have. You see it in television shows. Watch the first season of a television show. Watch the actors after season eight. Everything seems to improve, and it's the same on YouTube. Yep. So thank you for saying that. But, like, um, I think the big thing we took away, because like, it wasn't talked about, and um, when we were forcing the force youth ones and children when you were talking about um just in terms of growth for people because they were getting a bit worried about that like because everyone everyone's growing at their own levels as you as, mm -hmm. as we all say and people get very like oh how they show up here and when you start trying to tell them about you know you can pay for it you can do this like and you're kind of like you know a neutral understanding of like yeah that's what they do but over here we're building in yeah. a certain way like we're all trying to progress naturally, but there are channels that will turn around and just go. Whew. Yeah. Right. Because, but I think when people realize that, because I know it does scare a lot of people, they're after putting in this effort and they're like, why are they going? It's like, but that's where you have to kind of get away from that. Looking at why is this person doing? It's like, it's not about them, it's about what you're doing. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not going to turn around and say we don't get like that. Or everyone gets like that. Yeah. Well, we still get like that now. Yeah. But it's it's healthy once you're growing and you're not being like begrudging. But once you're once you're growing and you're learning something from them, that's the main thing. Because mm -hmm. it is hard for you know, you have as, as you said to us in the beginning, we have ideas and they don't take off. Yeah. Like that's yeah. that's just the way YouTube is. Like we sat there and we thought it was great, we'll leave it there. <laughs> yeah. We'll be yeah. like, Yeah. It, it, well YouTube can pick up over time as well. It's not one of them things where if the video doesn't do amazing in the first week, that's it. Like a lot mm -hmm. of our highest field videos we done two years ago. Yeah. Right. And they're just yeah. kind of starting to pick up. So it's like even some of our um I was looking at one of our hot sauce videos the other day and it has over two thousand deals in it and we didn't even Yeah. We didn't even know it got that high until we checked <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's what that's what happens. Like um and the big thing about it is this thing is setting your thing of has to do good in a week i don't know where that came from i don't know what that market down through the the chains of channels but we always kind of like we do a video and we're like we hope it does well yeah if it does amazing if people pick it up and they talk with us on it we'll talk with them if it doesn't that's okay it could mm -hmm. it could be next year's thing could be the year yeah. after that yeah. that's kind of how you have to build for youtube like you have to you have to remember it's there for them it's they'll come to it eventually or they may not or sure what was another one that picked up recently um this isn't one of ours now this is going to be a bit of a ridiculous one uh -huh. uh, banana slips on man like okay. that guy uploaded that ten, ten, 10 years ago and i picked up two years ago of just oh, yeah. walking and slipping on a man and just like that 
but that's that's the power YouTube. Yes. At the time, a few years later, it picks up them. But that's just how it goes. You guys have built quite a catalog of content. So now it's possible for a lot of your stuff to have percolated in the algorithm. Therefore, YouTube can pick it up and then say, hey, it's time for this to move, which is great. So I'm glad you've seen that. And I've always described Unstable TV, Danielle and James, as one of the most authentic couples of creators, our favorite Irish couple, our, yeah. <laughs> our couple of authentic creators, because um, when I look at your channel, even today, we can see that not every video is going to get 6,000 views in the first 24 hours. And I think that's wonderful because for the Tuber Chat audience, especially anybody that's going to check out your channel now, then they'll be able to see that. And I believe that alone will build some confidence in saying, hey, these guys don't hit one out of the park every single time. It's just exactly. they've done it so much that the channel is like on a huge trajectory now. But that took a while. And I appreciate you telling us about the turning point. We done a reaction on in Indian movie that was coming out called Monkey Man. That's what mm -hmm. it was. Monkey Man, yeah. And it's like their version of John Wick. Um, okay. So we came home one of the days from doing our days and we got this email. And we were like, what is this? Because you get a lot of emails that don't look right. And um, yeah. so what What the emails were in there? Um, it was asking us to go to the LA premiere of of the Monkey Man movie because they've seen it from our YouTube. Yeah. And obviously we're in Australia now, so we were like, we actually can't afford <laughs> flights right now. And we we're like, oh, yeah. no. But we were checking it out for about a week before we even got back to them because we were like, this has to be a scam. This has to be fake. But it wasn't at all. It was actually wow. real. And we were like, oh, no. Yeah. That would have been an amazing thing to do. But we just couldn't afford it when we were here. Yeah, we, yeah, we it couldn't would... believe it. Like, Because a lot of people are like, oh, what happened to my reaction? Well, we never thought that come out of doing a reaction. Yeah. And that was just because a lot of people were like, oh, this is coming with you. Share your thoughts on it. And we get the email that goes from LA premiere. And we were like, what? Wow. <laughs> Yeah, wow. so we just thought we'd share that with you. Like, yeah. that's one of the things that could happen. <laughs> so I'm glad for you to share that story. Um, so thank you for that. And what I often will tell people is for almost every single thing that happens in our YouTube journey, it's the first time it happens. So I hope that you both will take inspiration from the idea that that might only be the first time because you guys are, uh, like I said, growing fast and strong and anybody can see that. So I bet there's more good news like that for you in the future. Yeah. That's what you have to do though. If, you know, you have to be change it up. It's not. Yeah. With, with YouTube, you have to be like formless. You have to be like formless, like water. You have mm -hmm. to just, flow through it because like you have to not be afraid to get put in a box like or sorry stay out of the box like because you know once you get put in that box where that's all you can do that's kind of where you start you know losing it but if you're not afraid to just like experiment with things and mm -hmm. like you say to everyone on chill chat don't be afraid to experiment try new things and look at other channels and go oh that's working for them i'll give that a try mm -hmm. oh yeah i think that that's what really helps everyone yeah and it also yeah. helps with encouraging, you know, everyone's checking each other out and saying, yeah, you know, let's do this. Sure, we, like, um, make a bomb and some Michelle. Yeah. We get a lot of ideas from her. Like, when she done that thing, uh, the whipped cream with our son. Oh. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, like, <laughs> like a, a, a big part of our inspiration was, like, when she got a bit wild on our channel, we were like, let's get a bit wild yeah. as well. Like, yeah. Uh, she was an inspiration on that. And, uh, wow. Yeah, like big time. And then we had a, was it Love Always, uh, Joanne? She she was like very instrumental, like, because keeping us going. We had like a few bad days and she was always there with us. Yeah. But the uh -huh. stuff she does with her son as well, like, we see her trying like new things. And then we tried mm -hmm. the, um, what was it? The Korean filled yeah, package. Yeah, like, like a subscription okay. box unboxing kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's because we're watching more stuff and we're like, oh, we want to do that with you yeah. or we want to yeah. try it out. And we've just been taking stuff from like YouTubers like that. Mm -hmm. But that's that's what's cool. Like, you know, 
when you're when you're in the Chilperchuk community and you're like you're seeing other people and you're like, oh, I want to try that. Like, we don't look at oh, they've this many subs yeah. or they have this many views. We should do it now. We look at is our content good? <laughs> is our content good? Did we like mm-hmm. it? That's how we do it. Like the craziest thing now. Um, who was it? Uh, yeah. So we reacted on a guy. So this came from an American suggestion. Um, a good few Americans told us to check out a guy called War According to Briggs. Now his videos okay. are really good, but we like knew a fair bit about consoles, and we kind of went in on um his console stuff and like his dates and history. Now he has a million subscribers, right? This was something we were not expecting. And I kind mm-hmm. of trust for it. So we're having a dinner at the table. We were in the premiere where everyone would like to sit in and talk to everyone was premiering. And he comes in <laughs> and we were like, oh, <laughs> 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 he comes in. He's like, yeah, no, you're right. I did get that wrong. And he was like real cool. But I was like, wow, he could have just went in on us for that. Wow. But, yeah. That we, was cool. And we actually still talk to him now as well, every now and again. Yeah, we talk to him. He's a cool channel. We talk him regularly on Instagram. Like he, it's very down to earth. Like he's very um. Yeah. See, we we got a lot of like the, the way you do things often, Kevin. Like yourself, he's very authentic okay. how he talks about things. He doesn't mm-hmm. pretend like he knows this or that. He just turns yeah. around. And he says, "No, I have this for that," or "This is how I do it." You know, and he tries right. to tell his audience. So, like in his live stream, his million live stream as well. We weren't expecting this where he done as well. Like this really. This throw us for a loop. Um, so we were like, oh, we put us in it, but we didn't see it for a while. He actually kept us till the end, and then he turns around and he goes, I actually watch you guys regularly, and we're grandmothers yeah. Irish and everything, and we were like, what? Like, this is mad. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but that's another thing about it as well. It doesn't matter how big or small your channel is, you don't know who is watching you. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the majority of the time, you'll never know who most of them are watching you anyway, so... Yeah. Could be Tom Cruise that's checking your channel out and you never know. <laughs> but that's that's kind of the point of that story was we're trying to let everyone know that don't stop making content because you don't know who's going to watch it. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you really don't. Like we couldn't turn around and tell you that. We couldn't tell you in our YouTube journey that was going to happen. Right. It was just one of those things like he's like, yeah, I watch it regularly and he was able to quote stuff and everything. We were like, what is going on? <laughs> this guy has like such a book. We 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 do the same as well. We watch all. Everyone. Like we like that's what we do. Like sometimes we comment. Sometimes like we'll build up a playlist, as as you say, Kevin. Your catch up mm-hmm. list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you have to though, because like we don't we don't expect everyone to watch our stuff every day or as soon as it's posted or anything like that. No, never. So you know, everyone's busy with work and or kids or anything like that. So anybody can take the time out whenever to watch something that's what we're happy for yeah i think we're very fortunate and i think every youtuber forgets that that's how fortunate they are these people are spending their time never mind money or anything like that their time yes. like, time is something you won't get back and i think that's what's the most amazing and beautiful thing whether it's 10 views 100 views mm-hmm. five views then people still took what they can't get back and sat there and watched that and enjoyed your wow. with you. And it's powerful it's the way you put that, yeah. Yeah. That's true though. It's it, but that's the truth. Like we we all get caught up on this, like, you know, you wanna be this and that. But like that's why it was great when we found like we say, and we'll always say, like, you'll hear us in a lot of videos, we always talk about Chilver Chat yeah. because it was just mm-hmm. one of them places we found how would you put it, a YouTube home? Like yeah. we, we felt very that relaxed us. It's just a nice mm-hmm. community to have. Yeah. And um, that's hard to find as well. Yeah, like it's yeah. it's very tough because like 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 we say, like you go through the policies and you don't turn around and you go, Oh, I know this for a hundred percent this is definitely how it's gonna go. You're like, No, you could YouTube could just turn around and change the mind tomorrow, you know. Yeah. Well, that's, cool, yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's your job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it gets into, you know, there's a lot of jokes going on, a lot of fun in the yeah. chats and everyone's saying hello, how was everyone's day? And then mm-hmm. it, it got more into the honesty of, like, people are, I have it running on the phone. You know, people aren't pretending. I watch you religiously, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, if they can even, like, 
running on their phone in the background. That's a huge help as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Which is really cool. Let me ask you both, um, because you have done a lot of reaction videos is what I would say that you're known for. I've been lucky to catch you in live streams, sharing the camera work, sharing everything, you know, together. And as well, we know that you've got this short channel. So you're doing those as well. What do you enjoy making the most? Well, mm. I, I have an answer for this. Yeah, yeah, do you want me to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so realistically, the point of the channel, I love basically just working with Danielle. That was like mm -hmm. the whole thing. And the fact that I can do that as much as I want, that was like <laughs> the best part of it. And then not only that, the two of us doing it together. Yeah. Like we do everything together. But my favorite content that I love making, this is mm -hmm. just a personal preference. It's because I feel really good about it. Like I feel good about everything that goes up, but this one really spoke to me. When I was doing the Snapseed video, because a big thing was thumbnails, like I was learning graphic design, Danielle was learning, but that's mm -hmm. what really shot out for me, teaching people. Yes. And just w one of the ways we done the edits on that, where like the thumbnail comes up at the same time I'm talking. But teaching videos are kind of my favorite ones, like trying, because I feel like when we're doing the work that we're doing on the channel and then we can give it back and help people coming up. Wow. With, so like, you know, it's a place we can kind of direct them when they're lost and be like, we have a hair, like this is literally our process. Go and use it. It's there for mm -hmm. you. Please like use it. And if it doesn't work, I hope I helped you. But they're yeah. the favorite videos I like down. What about you? Um, I don't know what my favorite would be. I, I do like making the vlogs though because I like showing people what yeah you know what random things we get up to and what what's out there in the world that people might know about mm -hmm. um do you know like little things little places that we have found or you know events that might be on that people don't know about and things like that I like doing them but I like the reactions as well because we're able to voice our opinion on whatever's going mm -hmm. on in the world yeah 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 uh you know, I think that's a big one for us at the end to be able to just look at a piece of content and just be able to like join in with so many conversations. Yeah. It's really mm -hmm. cool. So one of the questions that's going to come up, especially when we've got a channel that's just grown. I mean, you guys have content getting into like well over 200,000 views and people are always going to want to know how they can get more views on their video shorts and streams. So what can you tell us in your experience that you would give somebody as advice now? I'm gonna go first. Yeah, you're the master of this one. Don't be afraid to go back and change the thumbnails and the tags and the titles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to do that. It doesn't have to be the exact same as it was when you posted it. If you have a better idea for a title or a thumbnail or a description or anything like that, go ahead and try it. Because no matter how many times you change it, YouTube is going to pick something. Yep. And it might push it out more. More people mm -hmm. might like maybe the colour scheme on it or the wording on it or something like that. And that will help bring more people in. That's what I think anyway. Because we were afraid to do that for a long time. And then when we started doing that a little bit, we noticed a bit more growth. Wow. Yeah, yeah so that's my opinion. What do you think? <laughs> um... Well, a lot of what Daniel said is spot on, but the thing about it is that's that's what's great about YouTube. You have that space to just go, you know, I didn't like that idea the first time it went up. Like, we've had thumbnails and we've had tags, we've had hashtags and stuff. We thought, oh, this is going to go, <laughs> it's going to be the best thing ever. Yeah. But no, it just went straight into the toilet. Yeah. But, that's fine because the beautiful part is you can go back, you can change it over, you can go, I'll experiment with this. Sometimes it could be, now this is what is crazy about YouTube, could be a tag change, yeah. it could mm -hmm. be the title. Like as much as people go, it's the thumbnail, like the title does play mm -hmm. a major part because like if you turn around, let's say a plane flying in the sky or you turn around and say 
a plane does a nose dive and then lands perfectly what sounds better <laughs> mm-hmm. maybe, maybe that might work for some people but see the way the two toils is like well i can just look at a plane or oh what's going to happen here right. i don't know why i used the plane but that's just where <laughs> i went for it yeah but, but you're absolutely right contrast of like toils and tags it like, does make a difference it does it's like um from our experience anyway it has like we've went back and sometimes we just changed the thumbnail and that did yeah. make a big difference. Like, there, um, what, what time are we doing? Um, we done it on one of the military videos, and we done it actually the Star Spangled Banner yeah. video. Okay. We had the original thumbnail for that. We thought it was the best thing we ever made. Um, got rid of it. <laughs> See, this is what happens. Like a, a month later, we're like, wow, this is the worst thing we could have ever put up. <laughs> and I know people are probably on oh, no, it's really good, but this is what happens in your own head. You're like wow, this is like not great, but we changed it that one and we love that one and probably next month we'll change it again. But don't be afraid to change around your content yeah. and really experiment with what's out there. That's great advice. When we think about engagement, one of the things that all YouTubers, or it seems like, are going to be mentioning is we need those thumbs up and yeah. what can you tell us about how somebody can tactfully get more thumbs up on more of their content? It's literally like we said about the comments. Just ask. Because yeah. it's something that a lot of people overlook as well. Like mm. when we're in people's live streams and stuff like that, we forget ourselves even to give it a thumbs up. And then when someone Me mentions too. it, we're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's simple. Just can you give it a thumbs up if you like the video? Does help. Yeah. And we noticed that when we started asking, we were kind of picking up a little bit more. Oh, good. Yeah, because we initially, when we were in um, when we were in your own live streams, when you were saying it does help, you know, YouTube algorithm push us out that bit more, and it'd be very generous if you could give a thumbs up. Yeah. So what we done was like, let's take that and make sure it's said. Because like, as mm-hmm. we were saying earlier on, we felt it was a bit cheeky at the start, but as we got to learn in your live streams, we got to learn in other YouTubers where they were asked for, we were like, let's actually just yeah. ask the audience. And mm-hmm. what the retention told us, it worked. Yeah. That's I mean, great. You can ask for as much as you want. It doesn't mean people are going to do it. <laughs> yeah. But no. it's better to say it than to not say it. Yeah. Yeah. At least it's there. But if you have, like, as you were saying, so we have a catalog built up now. If you have, like, a set of videos where it's always there it'll kind of become like for regular view so like when you're saying it they'll know like oh i know this section it's going to be like subscribe share yeah mm-hmm. you'll get one of them or you yeah. get none of them <laughs> but you're <laughs> right, you <pass. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> wow So Danielle and James, the other thing that a lot of creators think about when it's um, you know, they've got monetization on their minds is how to get those watch hours. And YouTube has changed the rules now. So the restriction for most creators is going to be that 3,000 hours of watch time if they're not aiming for the millions of shorts views. But what can you tell us in your experience about how to get those watch hours up faster legitimately? For the watch hours part, because like what we done, what we thought worked, but this is where it gets a bit tricky. Mm-hmm. So we went and we done like a playlist called Operation Saturation. So okay. it was just our heads bobbing for like 10 hours, it was a 10 yeah. minutes. And it was just a playlist of this with different color backgrounds. And we really thought we were onto a solid idea. This is where experimenting mm-hmm. comes in and it doesn't work. But it's fun to do anyway. Yeah, we put like yeah. royalty free, lo- like lo fi music in the background. I just yeah. had like a graphic on it, and we thought, you know, this is going to get our hours up and this is going to do for us and it's going to be amazing. It's, yeah, it was. It yeah. cracked. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. But for the watch hours itself, it's kind of more of a. Yeah, you have to do like long videos, but you have to kind of do, I'd say, more so. Yeah. or if it's like if you're going to review something try and lengthen it out to like um they're like 20 minutes because you can keep the viewers coming back for that okay 
you just kind of need to find that right balance of like where you can keep the retention. But the watch hours were always the trickiest for us. It was very tough because for like we had when we had about two or three hundred videos up there, the watch hours just weren't happening. Yeah. Like even right. like with the ideas we tried. But what we found was as we progressed into more like review content or when we start mixing our blogs and our challenges, but giving them them extra few minutes on like the product we're talking about or the vlog when Danielle's bringing us around, showing us everything, they did help the minutes, but then yeah. they'll come back around and you might not get the minutes off it now. Yeah. That's the only thing about it. I think hmm. a lot of it as well was us asking questions to people that are watching. Yeah. Because it kind of, I don't know, when, when we start asking questions in our videos, being like, you know, what do you think or have you used anything similar or, yeah. you know, just simple things like that. Just like simple questions, I mean, um, it kind of almost makes people want to stay a bit longer. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if that can help people. Like if somebody's like, you were saying, unboxing the phone, maybe it could be like, oh, what do you think is like the advantage or disadvantage of having this phone? Or what would be your favorite one? Or if you were to go for any model or any color or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think it kind of helps a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe. Because they want to like they want to engage more and they kind of sit on the end of the video. But if you get like a tangent of people, <clears throat> excuse me, if you get like a tangent of people chatting in the video and they'll go back and pick out certain points, that usually does help to watch watch hours. But we oh. haven't uh, perfected that. No. <laughs> but just. No. But that's another thing as well. It, I know people are going to comment good comments but people are also going to comment bad comments about i don't know maybe the way you talk or the way you're presenting things or something like that they're really important to listen okay. to as well yeah. it's hard it's so hard when you get bad comments but they're not always bad so i think that's another thing that can kind of maybe make the next video a bit better that people will want to watch more is when you listen to the bad comments too yeah. so you can take right. the bad and turn it a little bit and then maybe that'll help that's great hours. advice i don't know it's, it's <laughs> watch hours are so hard though it's it's the hardest thing on youtube is the watch hours yeah it seems that nobody way knows what people are going to watch at any time of the day yeah because like there's videos like like we had this big debate you know on the internet you know all our attention spans were gone but here we are like some of us could be on youtube watching 40 minute two hour videos of like nonsense yeah and mm -hmm. that that just does it and then like you could have like you'd watch an unboxing review and you'd be about 40 minutes or an hour deep and that's that's what happens like and then some days you might just watch shorts you're not even you're not chilling in it's just doom scrolling yeah that that's why the watch hours will always be the toughest because as much as they say they have a big read on like the human mind and stuff not really because <laughs> people change it up so much Right. Yeah, that's our two cents on that. Sorry, that wasn't <laughs> very helpful, but yeah. like, it is genuinely the hardest thing. Yeah. But it, it absolutely is because uh, allowing people to understand what you've gone through through your YouTube journey is going to also help people know that they're not alone. You know, I mean, I'm lucky enough to be doing these interviews with yourself and a few other creators, but then I get the same feeling myself. Wow, we've all been through a little bit of the same stuff. You know, which is great. I think it's helpful all the way around. We we looked at the watch time and then we kind of, like, we're not going to lie, we gave up, like, yeah. chasing it. If you get me. Like, we we done it for probably, like, two weeks and we were like, this is killing us, like, creatively. Like, we mm. weren't, like, YouTube wasn't really, we weren't filming when we started just looking at the numbers. So we were like, mm. it's going to come eventually. It'll come. Like that's the way you have to kind of go into it. It's like it will happen, but you just need to keep going through it because it's it's tough when you start looking at one number that you're gonna have to reach because you don't want to like you lose kind of the the love of it a bit yeah. if you keep looking at oh I mm -hmm. have to get this watch hours then you're not enjoying the actual content you're making then because you're just making it for that yeah and that's where we kind of looked at each other and said what are we doing yeah now we still get like that now i'm assuming everyone on youtube yeah. does like if something doesn't do well you're kind of like 
yeah. now what do we do for the next video and how do we get yeah. it back up and how do we do all this like it's important yeah. to look at the analytics and to look at the watch time but it's also important to not lose why you're doing it and why you like doing it in the first place yeah but it's it's easy it's an easy trap to fall into yeah, mm-hmm. we're, yeah, we're not saying we're super immune to it. Like, it's it's something you have to kind of avoid getting hung up on because it will put you in a bit of a bad bad place. Like, but see, I think this is where the two of us are very fortunate. Like, we forget how very lucky we are because like there's people just doing the channels on their own, yeah. but us two like we do it all together. Mm-hmm. So at least we have like. That type of like you don't lock yourself in your own head we can bounce her off each other and we can yes. look at each other and go what are we doing yeah like if one of us is having a bad day over the, the views or the subscribers or anything like that the other one's kind of like you know this is what we're doing <laughs> on YouTube. This is yeah. what happens. but when you're on your when you're doing it by yourself you, we can only imagine how tough that is just sitting in your own head thinking you know everything i'm doing is oh, Horrible, not worth anymore, even though that's not true. Yeah, that's never true. That's mm-hmm. why if we have any any YouTubers that reach out to us after this, you're having a bad day on YouTube, just contact us and just come into our Instagram DMs or Facebook or whoever you need to contact us. Email us even yeah. if you want. Mm-hmm. Um, whichever way is comfortable for you. We'll chat. We'll chat with you. Like we'll tell you what we went through. Like it's no problem because like we've had them bad days. And they do happen. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. Doesn't matter what you're seeing from other people. Like, you know, ourselves and Kevin have all been there. We've had the bad mm-hmm. days. You've had them. Oh, <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. But then you get back on the horse and you remember why you love it because it is a great journey, regardless. But yeah. stop into us by all means. Yeah. Well, yeah, like watch hours and stuff like that. It's just it bogs a lot of people down and it kind of stops people in their track. And that's, mm-hmm. that's not nice to see. Yeah. Right, like yeah. you said, we've seen a lot of people on Twitter just being like, right, that's it, I'm finished. I'm not doing it anymore, I can't. Yeah. And that's, mm-hmm. it's sad to watch because a lot of them that we've seen, their content was amazing. But YouTube just, sometimes it just takes so long mm-hmm. for a channel to pick up. Right. Or sometimes it could pick it up on the first day. Yeah. No, like, nobody knows. But, then, yeah. but that's what, that's what happens. And like, we, we like, yeah, so we get very like upset with, like when we see that, and we try and reach out and say, you know, this is what happened when we first started. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. If anyone, if anyone does yeah. watch this, reach out to us, and we'll help. Yeah, them. that's a generous idea. Thank you both. I'm uh, I'm not surprised, but thank you for offering that. <laughs> so I've mentioned it a couple of times. I've been very lucky to catch you both while you've been live streaming. And I just wonder what your thoughts are about how to get better engagement, more views, all the things we wish out of live streams. Do you want to go? Um, I mean, the last few live streams we've done, we've done the vertical ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, because you actually, when we were on your chat, you said do vertical live streams, so we tried now, and that actually really worked for us. We've done it twice, and we haven't done it. Since. Yeah, that's um, great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But the twice that we did do it, we got a couple of hundred views straight away. Um, yeah. A lot of people actually stay in a lot. So maybe that might help. That's just a different way of doing it. And um, maybe people haven't tried it out yet. That could be helpful for people. But I don't really know too much about lives, to be honest, because we don't really, like we live stream, but it's not like a huge part of the channel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it, it, it's hard to get people to kind of to stay in the stream yeah like unless we have the biggest thing we had like um like when we had um the quizzes when we done the quizzes engagement mm-hmm. rose there oh and then when we done because we experimented with our live stream where we drew um people's channel logos because we had like a pen and pad and we were like oh we'll draw our yeah. channel logos we got a good few there we had fun with that but i think a live stream needs to have like what you have in chill chat where the audience is a huge part, the way you have everyone interacting there and they're like, like the stream was that one. I think that is a great idea. And I think from the day before saying that, it's like, wow, this is because everyone's like a part of it and they're trying to take down that stream boss. I thought that was a good mm. touch. But that's yeah. where we kind of went. It's very important to have 
something on the live stream like it's either a milestone or because when we do milestones or we have a Q&A we get a lot but the vertical ones were crazy yeah like, when, okay. like when, when, when you said to try them out and Danielle was like yeah let's do it we put it up like straight away we had like it went 600 on the numbers then it went down wow. we had like 200 just sitting there yeah wow what's going on yeah so, and we we didn't really we were just kind of testing it out the two times we literally just walked around yeah yeah we we're just kind of showing everyone the beach that was kind of all along <laughs> um but yeah we'll probably do more of them but i don't know it, we used to have such a, like a live stream every week and then we just kind of that just fell a little bit when we did have it every week and it was constant at the same time it was growing yeah because mm -hmm. people were expecting it to be there at like say friday at like eight o'clock everyone yeah. knew we'd be live streaming yeah well mm -hmm. i don't really know what happened actually we just kind of it was stopped <laughs> I mean, like we got like a bombardment as well of like more content yeah. suggestions so we kind of started focusing on that but then mm -hmm. It was kind of around the time shorts were being rolled out, so we started doing a lot more like experimental stuff. Okay. And the thing we did see though with the live streams, what Danielle saying, the more schedule we had, we did have regular viewers on yeah. that part. Oh, but good. When we done a quiz or a Q and A, that's what really like got the engagement yeah. going. But mm -hmm. we haven't experimented enough with the vertical to give a full um, review on that. Yeah. But definitely yeah. when when we had more of a regular schedule like the way she over chats done where it's scheduled out regularly our live stream engagement was higher have it like a right. few that is in advance and share it around your social medias and stuff like that and just let people know when it's going to happen yep. yes that helps as well instead of just having a random pop-up live stream just in the middle of nowhere yeah like what we do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it should be easier for us to live stream now but like we just we just don't do that my life i think the heat is like yeah yeah the heat's just like the only thing so i didn't know the heat could do we thought the cold was bad in canada yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. one of the things that you mentioned earlier was touching on instagram um so i always ask in conversations like this what about the other social networks have you found any success drawing in traffic to your channels and videos and how can we use those social networks oh, all i have to say right now is social media is tough <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult <laughs> what do you think um yeah like it's certainly um it's tough to get like the reach you want over but it's it's the same as youtube you have to really focus on it but i wouldn't okay. rule it out for trying to promote your content either always make sure you can post it as many places as you can mm -hmm. but try and one thing i will say about social media if you see if you're unfortunate enough to log in and they're rolling out a new feature so let's say for example instagram rolling out a thing called polls underneath your like when you post a reel or a mm -hmm. picture you can poll it as well now that like they're obviously going to favor that because they want that right. until to be reached but they also rolled out an AI thing at the moment, like in your search bar. Like use mm -hmm. that as much as you can or try and like if you can make a picture relating to it, they'll push that out more. But definitely what we like to do is just for shorts experimenting with the social medias. If you think the shorts wasn't a good idea, upload your short as a reel and a Facebook reel as well. Mm -hmm. And like a Twitter video, because you'd be very surprised of reach difference yeah. it's okay. to get it's to kind of let you know that the content can be used elsewhere and you could end up growing that like for example we have um the real a uh, prank we done each other and um, it was in mcdonald's mm -hmm. with what was it the chicken nugget sauce yeah mm -hmm. so <clears throat> we uploaded that on youtube it didn't it didn't explode the way we thought it was going to be we put okay. on facebook reels and i got sixty four thousand wow excellent yeah. yeah yeah so that's why we're saying like just to kind of give your content another window or like another audience mm -hmm. use the social media as much as you can but always make sure you can use any new tools to help with your promotion yeah we do get 
like we definitely do get traffic from it but mm -hmm. a lot of our traffic has come from the youtube community tab and youtube okay. itself we've seen yeah. the search and the home tab from the analytics have pushed that out but social media i wouldn't rule it out it's mm -hmm. it's not something we know like a great deal about but it's something we do use promote regularly yeah like we haven't put as much thought and effort into the rest of the social media as we mm -hmm. have with youtube so that's why i'm saying it's really difficult because instagram changes in a second yeah twitter is we use it more so just for like you know talk people questions and commenting back to people and stuff like that facebook okay. we use everything to promote and we put all the reels up there and stuff and because they're all so different it, it's hard to keep up with everything that's going on yes <laughs> especially when like i said instagram changes in a minute you know you, like, Seems you like log it. on to instagram and something else is different mm -hmm. yeah but don't don't be afraid to uh throw your thumbnails yeah. up there or get your get your content talked about because you might another thing i will say as well just across all the social medias try and look for um because there are groups and there's communities in there kind of look for like youtube communities and like content creator communities but just be wary of like you know the obvious scams and because there are scams yeah. on them as well so just be careful with that but mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that do share like um how they're finding their journeys and experiences or even like um i think it was reddit you have as well for chamber chat is that Kevin? yes yeah even reddit as well can be used um for like content ideas and certainly promoting yourself now i know mm -hmm. that takes a while for like the upvote and stuff in it but we it's... haven't got a clue how to use reddit <laughs> <laughs> how many times we try yeah. and learn how to use it we just cannot figure it out nah but if, if it's something you is want to play around with definitely give it a go yeah. but also as well if, if social media doesn't suit you or it doesn't like suit what you're doing with your channel you don't have to use it yeah don't get no of course yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Because we thought, you know, Instagram was like the place to be and it was going to be amazing and we mm -hmm. just can't figure it out for the life of us. Yeah. <laughs> so we're still going to use it and we're still going to post the reels and whatever we find, you know, pictures, random things during the day, whenever we're done, we're still going to use it because we still like using the platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like monetizing and growing, it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we also like to use the social media to let everyone know we're still alive. What <laughs> <laughs> yeah. happened was when we done an American video, we just done a, a suggestion like because we done on it was to deal with like military like veterans and whatever happened was the guy's the guy's father was actually part of like the video the, like one of the soldiers they were talking about and when we were reviewing it and talking about it, he just loved because he went through a playlist of us. Now this mm. happens very rare. Went yeah. through a playlist of us and he just loved that we were so like like you said, down to earth and authentic. Yeah. And he just threw us like a super of like what, twenty wow. bucks or something? Yeah. Yeah, he just he was like, please don't ever stop and just throw us twenty bucks and then he just sits in the background of the channel now. He, See the good thing what? about super chat and stuff like that is because a lot of people think we're making thousands a month on youtube and we're not, like, there's some months that we don't even get a paycheck yeah yeah yes. like it's that's just the way youtube is we could mm -hmm. we could make you know we could have thousands and thousands of views a month it doesn't mean we're getting paid for it yeah. <laughs> yes but um with super likes and super thanks you can see it in the comments yeah so it's very mm -hmm. hard for people to say like you know i don't get them when they're right there yeah mm -hmm. So one of the things that I want to ask you about is monetization because 99% of the creators that come into the Tuber Chat family are going to have monetization on their mind and you've been monetized a long time now. So what can you tell us as far as success with monetization in your experience? We haven't really focused too much at all really <laughs> on membership. We have okay. a plan about what type of videos and stuff we want to do just specifically for members yes but 
it's it's executing it and trying to deal with that way is what's stopping us. Okay. I think that's actually another fear that we have is that we're going to do all this and no one's going to come and look at it or anything like that. <laughs> um, we just haven't done it yet. I don't know why. Um, because yeah. we talk about it all the time that all right, we're going to do the monetization videos now and we're going to this is only going to be for members and we're going to share it around and we're going to do all this and then we just don't. Yeah. I don't know what's mm-hmm. stopping us. We just don't do it. I yeah. don't know why. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we're sitting here trying to come up with like because we want to feel like we're giving something with the memberships. Yeah, because that was like that's a big thing for us because like it's a big ask when we like we brainstorm all these ideas and we want to do them like. We'll eventually get them done, but this mm-hmm. is how our YouTube journey has been as so far as with monetization for uploading. It's always had these big ideas, and we're scared of the result. Yeah. Because yeah, the result yeah. could either be huge, it could not be, but we'll still keep going regardless. Mm-hmm. With memberships, it's tough to kind of say what tier is worth what. Yeah. I think that's the biggest, uh, right. biggest ask with them. But yes, I see some channels do a great job on it. They do an amazing job. For example, we have Dave's Adventures out there. He does a great tier yeah. system the way he does it with his members. Okay. And then yourself with Chopper Chat, Kevin. Great system there. But we're just kind of like trying to mix how everyone else is doing it, you mm-hmm. know, in the YouTube community. And right. get an idea because it is it is tough. Yeah. It, it's something that we do struggle with. No, um, we have to just completely revamp it as well because. When we were doing the membership things, I think we just kind of rushed it a bit. Yeah. And then we okay. stopped. We just kind of left it there and then stopped. We didn't really, like, we're thinking about it and then we're just not doing anything. And I don't, like, I, I keep saying, I don't know why we're not. We mm-hmm. just, <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're ready to go. We're ready to have everything that we planned yes. for the, the members and stuff like that. We just haven't. And I don't know why. Yeah. I have the same thing that goes on with me when it comes to making videos and things like that. I think it's there's so much of a mountain in front of all of us. It's hard to yeah. do it all, and we don't want to make mistakes either. So yeah. uh, what I'm gathering from what you're saying, though, is you have plans for more ideas when it comes to the members. So we'll just keep an eye on the channel, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. I know there are people out there who want to support in that way, regardless of perks and the different things that we add so i always recommend that we just have it available if somebody finds it suitable but i'll be looking forward to seeing what you do with memberships moving forward then one of the things that we know is that 99 percent of the people who come into the tuber chat family are going to have monetization on their minds and while i like to push a lot of the youtube systems we all know that there's a lot of other ways to monetize a channel. One of those ways is with Patreon, and you both have found a little bit of success there. What can you tell us about your experience with Patreon? So, well, I'm gonna say to you actually, because we've gotten about 50-50 from each of them. So with Patreon okay. and with Buy Me A Coffee, yes. what we do for both of these is, we ask people if you want certain videos, it can be anything, reactions, challenges, you want us to try something, Mm-hmm. If you, you know, donate coffee to us or donate whatever on Patreon to us, we'll get that video up immediately and we'll mm-hmm. have it on them sites just for you and yeah. just for the members on that site. And then oh. maybe a month or two later, we'll post them on YouTube for everybody else. Oh, so wow. if you if you donate to us, we'll do it immediately and mm-hmm. we'll make sure that you are the first one to see it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what we've had... Um... Well, we've had uh, recently a big one for our Patreon. Now, this uh, this person, like, they're lovely. They come back every now and again. They're from um, South Korea, okay. and they told us about Admiral Yi. Like, that's where we have a whole playlist of them. That was on Patreon okay. first. They paid us for that to do that because mm-hmm. they wanted uh, us to explore our culture because they wanted wow. to hear what we had to say okay. about it. So we had that put out there, and they on a patreon for us that way and they support it through that but they come back every now and again where they might be like can you do this is like a few months in between they might go here is this much can you do this um and we'll do their video it'll go up there for the month and then it'll come out on youtube after oh wow so, we buy me a coffee as well like we've had 
even with like, certain interviews, like people want us to react on like Tom McDonald interviews, someone paid us just for a whole playlist of it. Wow. And again, we done a month and then same as but we've had success with <clears throat> as much as like the super chats and super stickers, we get like they're like months in between and we get one or one or two. Mm-hmm. But more people feel more comfortable um kind of on Patreon or buy me a coffee. We've okay. had people come in to buy me a coffee and they'll give us sometimes they'll just go, here's five coffees. Um Wow. Actually, sorry, I do have a story for the buy me a coffee one. Yeah. Just yeah. wanna give a give a very quick um shout out to um what was it was the very Oh Team Park Baza, yeah. Yeah, Park Baza. We went through we were homeless in Ireland for a bit and okay. Big, big shout out to Team Park House because he came in and was so generous. He bought us five coffees, so that's the equivalent of like a hundred euro. Just the wow, time, which was really amazing. Yeah. So, just want to give a special shout out for them. Just the type of like buy me a coffee can do, like, yeah, for, it can be really, really helpful for people for creators, yeah. So, like, but there's you set the limit on it, like, they yeah. can throw wherever, like, that was very generous. Yes. What he did. Well, like we don't ask for like oh like we'll only do the video if you give us this amount of money. Right. If you throw us fifty cents, we'll we'll yeah. do it. Yeah. We 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 let the viewer say what they want to, don't we? Yeah. So what happens is, for some reason, they feel a bit more comfortable with the uh, Patreon or buy me a coffee. Okay. But just a story about we, we talk about super chats. Um, what happened was. We were fortunate enough to have we American video where we reacted on like a military uh, soldier a few mm-hmm. months back, and what happened was the guy's father was actually part of this like unit, and he came in and he loved what we were doing, and he super chat was like twenty bucks. Oh wow! And now he he he's, he went through the playlist that way. He's watched their stuff, and he stays with us now. You got a true fan. It's, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> But that's just like some of the ways of how like monetization can work. Like yeah. it's not like a lot of people think you make a monetize and this will start happening. It hasn't been a one track system. It's just been up and down and then some days you'll or sorry, some months you'll have like people who come in, they'll be like, I love what you're doing, don't stop or they'll go, Can you do this one? And they'll put a special request. But they see him. Just from our understanding of monetization, they seem more comfortable on buy me a coffee yeah. or Patreon. Interesting. You get the odd super chat here and there, but it's usually through them sites. So if anyone wants to look into them and set them up with yeah. your channel, that's great yeah, advice. So, kind of overlook them as well. Like they just think it's just YouTube and that's it, but it's not. This doesn't necessarily have to be just that. Because right. we have to remember as well, like as we're all like. We, we love what we do, but a lot of us are consumers and we always like a safe way for like what's comfortable for us, what way we're going to use our money. Like mm-hmm. I, I may feel comfortable on Patreon, whereas like a friend down the road may feel comfortable on buy me a coffee or yes. another one might feel comfortable just doing a PayPal don- donation, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Now we haven't had a PayPal <laughs> donation. <laughs> so I can't really talk too much about that. No, but it's just, you know. Yeah. It's whatever, Steve. Your channel or nothing. We found right. with monetization for like donations and stuff, it's wherever way the viewer is comfortable for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense because like if I was if I or Danielle was down into a channel, it'd be what we're used to. Yeah. Uh videos. So it'd be buying me a coffee for us then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that you uh mention that because there, you know, we have to remember that not every platform, not every service is available in every region and every country. Yeah. Yeah you know, and things like that as well. It's nice to have a variety so that people can use it when they're there. But I hope everybody can take inspiration from what you've talked about, because this is the first time in the series that we're hearing about Buy Me A Coffee and Patreon, even though I know they're very large networks for monetization. So thank you for that. Yeah, just what you're, just to go back on what you said there about um, certain regions, the mm. Patreon was actually originally set up because of, uh, we had people from certain regions that couldn't access the YouTube donations. Yeah. Right. So just going back on that, yeah, that one was a, uh, you just reminded me of the reason why, yeah, <laughs> that's why we originally set the Patreon up. So right. just, that's a good point. 
um, people keep asking us, you know, about do we pay for views or do we pay for subscribers or anything like that? <laughs> we haven't ever paid for views or subscribers. We have paid for ads on YouTube though. Right. We've done it on two videos. We put 10 euro into each video just to see, to try and up the engagement on them. Mm -hmm. And just to kind of see, you know, if it will be helpful to us or how much we need to put into it and, you know, kind of stuff like that. Right. It, you need a lot of money for things like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you do need a lot of money for things like that. If you want, like, say, 10,000 views on a video, you're talking a couple of grand. Oh, like, wow. It's a, it's a lot. We, we can tell you the video, actually, it, the fallen um, of World War One, wasn't it? Yeah, the fall in the World War One or World War Two, it was one of them we put on. Yeah, um, okay. And it was just, just so you know, because we always want to be as transparent as we can with that as well. Yeah. We have paid for ads for two videos. I can't remember what the second one was. We didn't find it too useful, right? But other people might. Yeah. Um, but we have put money into VidIQ and things like that for the okay. the memberships. We liked it. We thought it was good. We don't do it oh. every month. Well, we got a video sale with them. Yeah, um, just going back on the, the ad part. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, so what we done for that was just to kind of test that out. So we had yep. our usual, how we do the background, like tags and hashtags and stuff. And then we done what YouTube said was the right one to do. For okay. Video. So we done that with the ad and paid for the ad. And our actual original way of doing it got us more views and engagement. That oh wow! Yeah. So, mm. like I said, we only put ten euro onto it. It wasn't that much, but the analytics kind of still gave us enough information. Yeah. Right. So, if people want to try that out and see, because it does give you a little bit more of an insight. Yeah. Right. You've paid for more data with the ad, if that yeah. makes sense. I see. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It does make sense what you say. It's almost yeah. worth uh, certainly looking at. So I'll just yeah. add to it and, and, and just say, you know, there's a lot of companies and a lot of products out there that will claim to legitimately boost your video. And just for everybody, please beware. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, there's a lot of scams out there, right? So we have to be careful. Oh, we but YouTube, just straight from YouTube. Yeah, we'll YouTube. Straight YouTube ads stuff, so. Yeah. YouTube gives us a, a, the ability to make almost any video an advertisement. And even on the Tuber Chat channel in the very beginning, I don't even remember whether it was 10 bucks or you know some, some small amount of money that I used for the trailer just to promote the channel. But I tried it once just to see what would happen. It's still there now in the background as unlisted. And um, just when we try the legitimate ideas, we get an idea of whether yeah. or not they can be effective. But thank you for sharing that because that's really important information for everybody as well. Yeah, we're just going to talk about um, VidIQ because we did, like, um, Self and Danielle pay for a membership on that to see mm -hmm. if it done any growth. Okay. Now, the tools on it were very, were very good in terms of, like, learning about what your audience is doing Okay. Uh, what they view, how your videos yeah. are being received. Yeah. And they have like lessons on it as well to try and give you more of an insight on the analytics and stuff like that. Because analytics get so confusing. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's more so like for creators that are trying to like learn as you go as well. Like they have the lessons next to like where you're promoting, but also as well, they have a good ranking system yeah. on what way your video will score, but they also have like a tier system of like what type of tags might help your video and they'll what was it again? They put they put the video on like a list so you can see like what your video is going up against. Yeah. Oh. Which kind of gives you an idea of like where it's gonna hit on that list. Very so, cool, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we're not affiliated <clears throat> with VidIQ or anything like that. We just found it really helpful. Um we use the free site anyway. Yeah. Um yeah. we use the free content anyway, but a couple of months ago, we were like, we might as well invest into ourselves on the channel anyway. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we done it for a few months, and then we kind of stopped them, and we're like, no, that was actually helpful. So we we kind of just do it every every couple of months, we'll do it for about a month or two. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's helped. Yeah, that's great. One thing I will say as well <clears throat> to everyone watching: don't be afraid to invest in yourself. Yeah. Like it took mm -hmm. us a long time to get to that. Because we were like, oh, should we put this much? But 
now we're like more like we need to uh, invest in ourselves, like not be afraid to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be anything like here with <clears throat> money or anything either. Like, Excuse me. Things for the like here was like $20 a month or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like we're after buying new equipment and it, you know, it's not, we bought a ring light and I think that was like 25 as well, but that's going to last us for about two years. Yeah. Yes. So it doesn't like, it's good to, you know, don't be afraid to put the money in yourself as well. Mm-hmm. Another another thing as well. I want to leave with this. Yeah, I'll, no, I'll, I'll bring us like <laughs> <laughs> we are very very soon. We're just in the middle of walking through at the moment. We are going to be releasing a video that like it's kind of a site that does a lot of stuff to help like the Chilver Chat community and the YouTube community. It's okay. more of like a kind of a tutorial teaching video. Mm. But we're gonna go through this site that really helped us and we're gonna um promote on the community tab and hopefully it helps yeah. other people. It's a free site as well. It's a free site, you don't have to sign <laughs> up for it. It's basically it'll help with like graphic design, um your captions, um where else like kind of like formatting the video and like what because ratio is always very hard when you're starting out. Yes. What way to get the ratios for your quality and it, they have it has like a free AI tool on it to help bounce like you know like video scripts or thumbnails. That's uh, makes like AI thumbnails as well. The guru thing that they do with the small YouTubers at the start. Mm -hmm. This is only because it happened to us when we were watching stuff. So okay. this is like again from our experience. A big thing that no one tells you when you're watching because these guys can sell you courses and stuff, mm -hmm. is they can do this thing on the page that a lot of people might not know where they're saying they're earning X amount. Like, they're saying, like, channels, like, that, you know, you see with subs, like, hours or, like, you know, people coming up as well. They can do this thing on the browser. People might not know it. Which are analytics, you can go into inspect element on the top okay, right yeah. hand corner of your browser, and they can change the numbers to make it look like they're making a million off this, so uh, just a bit of advice to everyone. Just be careful with them videos because they're not true. Like we're not sitting here millionaires or anything like that because I know they <laughs> say if you re-upload this and that stuff and what they'll do is they'll go on, they can change the numbers on that page and they'll do inspect element. They'll make their views and their watch time look like I want to share that with everyone. Just watch out for videos like that. Yeah, thank you for that. Just to clarify, um, the Danielle and James are talking about the developer tools that we find in a lot yeah. of common web browsers. It's there in Firefox, in Chrome, in Edge, in Safari. It's in all of them. And um, what that is is just drawing in local information onto your machine. It doesn't have to be true. And then you yeah. could just screenshot it, video, record, whatever you want to do, and it'll change back after. But we always have to be aware of any kind of uh, scams and things like that. But that's great advice because it's the first time I've heard it described in that way. But it makes perfect yeah. sense what you say. Yeah, but when you know, you're starting off and you're watching videos like this, that's another thing that like it gets in your head when you when that doesn't happen for you. And when mm -hmm. a lot of the time people are just, you know, they're not truthful about it. So. Yeah. Yes. Which is sad because, you know, when you're starting off, that that's going to stop a lot of people from even trying to start as well. Very possible, unfortunately, yes. Okay, Danielle and James, thank you so much for being with us from Unstable TV. Uh, I hope you guys will come back after you get to the 100,000 subscribers and visit <laughs> us again and give us more insight. And for everybody watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody who you think needs to see it. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought about what we talked about, anything that we missed. And then if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I hope you will. I hope you'll visit Unstable TV and their shorts channel subscribe to both of those put that notification bell on and then we'll see everybody again soon thanks everyone bye bye, bye.